Hello. Hi. In the literature, the terms morphological processes and morphological operations have not been used in a uniform way. Some linguists even contradict each other. In our approaches to words and word structure, these two aspects of morphology are strictly kept apart. We define morphological operations as to how words can be modified, that is, by the addition of new material, by changing existing material, etc. In the following, we will outline, discuss and exemplify the central morphological operations in present-day English and in other languages. Morphological operations manipulate base forms in various ways, for example, by adding items, by concatenating two or more entities, or by non-concatenative operations that somehow modify the base. Further operations range from more complicated concatenative ones to the subtraction of material from the base. Let's look at concatenative operations first. Yes, perhaps the simplest and most direct means by which a language can mark a category is by the addition of some material to a base form. The material that is added is referred to as affix. The operation is called affixation. Depending on their position in relation to the base, affixes are called prefixes, as in remake or mislead, suffixes, as in kindly, waiter or walks, Infixes, as in the highly expressive example Kanga Bloody Roo, or circumfixes, as in German Gelegt. Yes, but this picture of words consisting of a string of morphs is too simple. Besides affixation, there are quite a few other formal operations by which complex word forms can be generated. These operations are referred to as non concatenative, since the resulting word cannot easily be segmented into morphs. One important type of non-concatenative base modification changes the stem vowel, as in present-day English drink, drank, or in German ich trinke, ich trank. Other changes are not phonemic, but rather supra-segmental in character. In present-day English we have examples of stress shift, as in contrast versus contrast, and in Russian such shift may even change the case, as in the nominative and genitive forms of window. Well, and what about tonal changes as in ma in Chinese? Well, the tonal changes should also be listed under the heading of morphological operations is at least doubtful. But in any case, the change of the tone in Chinese words may distinguish different types of meaning. Ma. 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 In addition to the main morphological operations on bases, there are further types of morphological alternation. They range from the addition of parts of the base to the complete replacement of a form by another. Here is a technique where part or all of the affected base perhaps modified in some systematic fashion is copied. This operation is known as reduplication. Do we have any examples in present-day English? Yes, but English makes use of reduplication only very sporadically, as in hickety pickety, hocus pocus and so on. But other languages make frequent use of this technique, for example in order to make plurals or to build tenses. Here's an example from Indonesian. Buku. Buku, buku. And what about forms such as go, went, or be, is, or am? Well, they constitute the most extreme form of base modification, where one base form is replaced by another. This is most frequently encountered in the closed classes of the grammar, that is, pronouns, copular verbs, and so on. So, suppletion is thus a morphological operation that expresses no systematic similarity between the forms of a paradigm. Let us summarize. Okay, 
Morphological operations define how words can be modified. That is, what type of operation is applied to change a word. Morphological processes, by contrast, define different ways of building words, the two principal ones being inflection and word formation. They will be discussed in another e-lecture. Until then, have a nice time. See you.